Howdy, it is I, Junk, back again so soon, but not soon enough for my personal tastes. I wanted to talk to you sooner. It is now 4.35 a.m. Monday morning, the wee small hours of the morning here on the east coast of the United States. I wanted to talk to you earlier Sunday, but life got in the way. You think you know how that goes? I know I know how that goes. I've already got two games to show you, and I got some gameplay, and, and I got the voiceover done, but I could not manage to get the intro because the intro is important because I want to talk about the test server changes. But before we get there... Let's deal with the two big changes in the hangar right now, and you'll see them in the game today. We have the less uh, shocking one, the auto-angler back in the lineup. I needed something in that slot with a little mid-range capability. And this may be the angler's last hurrah, question mark. We'll talk about that some more. And I'm curious to know what you think about it, too. But this is the same old boy that we've all come to, I don't want to say love, but tolerate. On the other hand... The other change is somebody we do love very close to uh, my personal heart, and I think many of yours, the Fenrir, the cryptic Fenrir in this case, I've got many. I think this is the only one I've marked three. I've got a couple 2.12s for different, different builds, but he's sporting the newest of the new, the ultimate Orkins. And I tried other things in that, in that heavy slot. I tried Redeemer, I tried the melee weapons. Ultimately, <laughs> ultimately, the hammer is the only thing that has really, I think, worked so far. Uh, two repair amps, one immune amp, that's classic. One quick change to the pilot. I took out, I believe it's called the Adamant Guardian. Let's see, because I, I can never remember correctly. What did I take? I, th I think it's Adamant Guardian. Is that the one where if they have more than three, or three or more beacons? Yeah. I took out the Adamant Guardian skill to make room for the explosives expert on the Orkin. Because if you're going to have the fanciest weapon in the game, you ought to probably give it the fanciest skill you can. One other interesting thing to note is the Paralysis Drone. The Paralysis Drone I put in specifically because I wanted to lock people down and then hit them with the Orkins more. However, I didn't appreciate... It's got the On Repair Unit Defense skill. I don't know how I missed that. So, with the unstable conduit, we got the repair. This should be a pretty beefy little warrior, and I think you'll see it's not, not disappointing yet. All of that said, let's jump over to Discord and take a look at the test server this weekend. Okay, we're here on Discord. If you see in the bottom left corner, my Discord name is Junk, M-J-U-N-K, and the letter M, Junk Mail was taken, and fewer letters are better than more. Now, everybody stop panicking. This is, these are the test server changes. I know that on some channels they are fudging as to whether this is what is going to happen in 9.2 versus whether these are things that might happen in 9.2. They call it the test server because they're still testing. Some things that are going to be buffed might be buffed less or more. Some things that are going to be nerfed might be nerfed less or more. And sometimes things don't get nerfed at all that were going to be nerfed. Also, 9.2 is at least 15 days away. How do we know that? There's 15 days left in the current box event. Let's talk first about the two big weapon changes and then talk about the meta robots and then we'll talk about everything else. Claw, Jaw, and Talons. We got the Rust Rockets, and we got the lasers that I'm so fond of on the Behemoth. Rust Rockets first. Shot Interval is more than doubled. Damage goes up by 15%, and the Rust Effectiveness is decreased. Durability Recovery goes down to 50% instead of 75%. Defense Points decreased by 25% instead of 50%. First of all, the 15% damage, you can ignore that entirely because there was a 15% nerf. That's just reversing the nerf. The effectiveness of rust itself being decreased is important and is painful, but the real thing that is going to make this a much less uh, usable weapon, or at least a much less powerful weapon, is the increase in the shot interval because it's going to slow down the effect accumulation itself. Now what I said when they, re when they gave it the 15% damage nerf is doesn't matter, and it doesn't matter because it didn't change the effect accumulation how fast those weapons put you into rust 
was much, much more important than the damage they did. And you can tell that because it was one of the few weapons that you actually saw hybrid builds that were successful. You saw people in, like, the Revenant running two uh, light rust rockets and a melee weapon. Or I ran two light rust rockets and the ultimate orchid on the invader. Or you saw the nether, two rust rockets, two sonics, you know, whatever. The reason they were able to do that is because the weapon fired so quickly that the, uh, the effect accumulated so quickly that you could rust someone up and then take them out with the other weapons. What other weapon in history can you think of that had an effect accumulation that strong? I, I don't know. The only thing I could compare it to is the Scotty in its heyday. But the thing about the Scotty was it was also the most powerful weapon, period. So you didn't see like any hybrid builds, because why would you run anything but the Scotty? That would be crazy. The Rust Rockets, you did see that. And to compare it to another effect accumulation, uh, one I think is totally useless in the current meta, is, is the Frost Rockets. Other than the Glacier Behemoth, I have yet to see an effective effect accumulation of Frost on any robot. Because they fire too slowly, they don't have enough ammo, you know, when full. If by some miracle you manage to freeze somebody with fewer than four of them, you won't have any ammo left to do any damage to them. So you'll freeze them and then they'll unfreeze. Now, that's great in a team coordination situation, but most of the time, your teammates are busy and you're just mildly inconveniencing them. So this is going to see these weapons turn into much more situational, much more unusual picks. I don't think it's going to kill them entirely. They're going to fire at the same speed as Zenith's, <laughs> and I'm not sure that they're going to be much more popular than that. I guess they will, just because everyone has them now. So I, I saw on Reddit, they're just people who went crazy on these weapons, and that really hurts my heart because I think they kind of encourage you to play like kind of a jerk. People don't think about this for the most part, but we all intrinsically understand that how you play is, imp is influenced by the weapons you're using, right? We all get that a sniper weapon will influence you to play further, and a melee weapon will, inf will influence you to brawl. You don't have to be a rocket surgeon to piece that one together. But the point I'm making is, sometimes there's more subtle ways in which the nuances of a weapon can encourage you to play one way or another. And these particular weapons, I think, just encourage you to be a jerk. They encourage you to, like, get close to someone, find some place where you're hiding like a coward behind map geometry, and just camp there. Is camp up close camping is maybe the way to put it? I don't know. I do know that I hated it. It was just terrible. It felt bad. It felt bad to do. It felt bad to receive. I'm hoping this is a good rework that makes these weapons less trash. But these were just ugh, trash weapons for a trash meta. And I'm glad to see them get buried. Obviously, I've got more complicated feelings for the lasers. <laughs> So let's talk about the lasers. Time to overheat from 9 seconds to 7 seconds. Cooldown interval increased from 0.5 to 0.8. And cooldown speed decreased from 2 to 1.5. So they're going to overheat faster. They're going to cool down more slowly. And it's going to take longer for them to enter the cooldown. I think this is going to make the pace of these lasers feel much more like the Prismas. Which are also on this list. I think that these are going to be much less likely to be seen in any type of brawling capacity. The need to cool these weapons down and the, the inability to make sustained fire happen is going to make them things that you're going to want to do from range and hide. And that is going to put them in a class much more similar to the Prismas, especially now that the Prismas have the 25% damage nerf. You can see right below, right below those lasers. There's the Prismas, 25% damage nerf and increased ammo clip. Because one thing about the Prismas is that the dry firing feels so bad. I'm thinking maybe that now the Prismas and these lasers are going to feel very similar at range, is my guess. The difference being, of course, you actually have a pilot that can increase your time to overheat on the lasers. How much that's going to play into the decision to use one or the other, I don't know. I do find it interesting that we wait for years to get the ultimate sniper map back, Yamantau, and they give it to us as they nerf most of the sniper weapons. And this could just be that they want more people to use Reaper, but Reaper, I still don't have one. 
That's how hard Reaper is to get. So I assume much like the Rust Rockets, they'll be given out like candy at some point in the near future. Let's talk about the meta robots here for a second. Angler Shield durability reduced. Ability reload time goes from 12 to 14 seconds. Speed 55 kilometers per hour reduced down to 30 to 53 kilometers per hour. Is this going to kill the angler? I don't think so, but it's definitely going to change its role. The angler was slow to begin with. We might have reached the point where a viable angler needs a nitro unit. I don't know. Um, angler might now even be a better platform for some of the ranged applications. I've I've run the ranged laser angler build that I think it was Vulture told me. I'm surprised you didn't just make it a range thing. So I actually built one that has the overheating pilot that maximizes shield durability. Making it slower is, is a bit of a head scratcher to me. I feel like the angler didn't have speed to talk about, and so now we've gone from the point where it has no ability to catch you to where its slowness is an active liability. Mars turret shot interval increased. Good, yes. Do more of that. Is it going to kill the Mars? No. It's going to kill one build on the Mars. It's going to kill the build that's the most annoying. They launch the turret and hide. But Mars is still going to be very, very fast. The turret's still going to be useful. I, I think it's it's still going to be a great robot. How meta? I don't know how meta, but for me, the, the strength of the, of the Mars was to drop that turret and start running. Whether that means running around people who've been gravity amped or that means running beacons. So this is going to kill the I'm going to hide and just take you out with a turret build, which is good because that falls into the same kind of incentivizing, annoying play like the Rust Rockets. So I'm, I'm just happy for that. Nether, ability activation interval increased from 0.5 seconds to 0.7 seconds. Ability charge reload time increased from 0.5, sorry, increased from 5 to 7 seconds. Ah, sorry, it is now 4.49 a.m. I'm, I'm hanging by a thread, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not, here's the thing. I don't think that's going to harm the Nether that much because I don't think the Nether's that good. The Nether is good, and people think it's, and you know, it's it's uh, its adherents th think it's good because they've put the broken rust rockets on it. And once they can't actually rust you up and use effect accumulation to take you down, it ain't nothing but a strider with less firepower. All of those little, you know, oh, it's got the shield thing, and oh, it can, it's got the EMP gun, and the pilots regenerate, whatever. It's a flimsy little four light weapon robot that will run around you till it gets tired and then you put it down to sleep just like a toddler. Okay, let's take a look at the non-meta weapons here. Flux and Trident both get a 15% damage buff. Vortex, increased AoE, 10% damage buff. I don't know what the damage buff is going to do to the Flux because I never ran it. Have you? Has any... I mean... Has anybody actually run enough Flux to have any idea what it's going to do in the meta? And I'm not even sure it's meant for Champion League. Uh, Trident. I tried to run the Trident on the Fury because the, the, the Trident Fury with the Panda skin just looks so good. I couldn't do it. I mean, I got a, a couple kills, like cheesy ones, but I, I obviously don't think the Trident is going to be aimed at Champion League, so I think that maybe with the Flux is trying to see some adoption in lower leagues because they pick two weapons that literally no one's playing and the vortex also i always wanted to run vortex but i missed that meta increased aoe and the 10 percent damage buff i'm looking forward to trying it out but i'm slightly skeptical it's going to do a lot to any of the champion or masters league metas we'll see we'll see i, I would love if it did loki and nightingale Loki gets a little bit more speed. Nightingale gets repair power and durability. Let's file these both under who cares. They're stealth robots in a stealth killing meta. Every single robot you're going to see is going to have some anti-stealth stuff, and most of them are going to have quantum radar. Loki is going to die immediately upon dropping. Nightingale's going to die immediately upon going in the sky. I wish they were viable, but they're not. Not in this meta. Doesn't matter what you give them. It's like the Erebus when the when the meta was was going through shields, and the Erebus needed a shield to survive. It was dead on arrival. It's more viable now than it was in its in its own meta. And Loki and Nightingale, it doesn't matter what you do, 
If the viability of the robot depends on stealth, it's not a viable robot in a meta where everyone goes through stealth. Bulwark. Aegis Shield Durability 10%, Aegis Regeneration Rate 10%. Listen, I, I've run the Bulwark. I've got videos on the channel. I love the Bulwark. Let me ask you a question. Who cares? Who's out there saying, oh man, this Bulwark would be great if we just had 10% more shield regeneration? No, 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 no. It's a hard robot to use. It is very durable, and um, it's a great, like, you know, non-champion tank. It's, it, you can play it in Champion League. It's just, the thing to remember about Bulwark is you have to switch between your physical shield and your Aegis shield, and the Aegis doesn't regenerate when it's in use. So you've got a cooldown on that. It's not the squishiest robot in the hangar, but you're spending a lot of time managing a resource you don't have to manage on any other robot. That just happens automatically. And you're doing that instead of having an ability that would actively help you. The Bulwark is a novelty robot at the best of times, and changing the stats on a novelty robot, like, it's not... <laughs> Unless they want to give him like a 50% durability and regeneration rate buff, it's not going to matter. It's just not going to matter. Because there's, there's no upside to an ability that is to that functionally is just unnerfing one of your two shields. It just doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry for all the Bulwark fans out there. It's just not... It doesn't make any sense still. So yeah, I'm not... I don't see anything here that that looks to me like it's terrible, terrible, terrible. Obviously, the laser nerf hurts me more than the other things, and I think that is probably going to encourage me to take them off most of my robots. But that's the, I think that's the goal. They want to see adoption of other things, and so they're going to get adoption of other things. It might be the Reaper if in some far-flung future I can ever manage to get one. Glad to see the the nether nerf uh, very glad to see the rust rocket nerf and we'll see about the rest but don't don't you know there's two weeks left before we have this on our on our hands don't freak out they've gotten more data from this test server some of this might change i'd love to see the vortex get you know an 80 percent damage increase that'll, that'll probably rearrange people's priorities anyway let's get back to the hangar all right i've got two games to show you today one is a valley where I just made the decision to open with the angler instead of the behemoth and then one is a moon not the most behemoth friendly environment to begin with and we get to see some of the other robots shine and uh, make some opportunities happen and let's just check it out all right we are here in the valley and first drop I'm going to bring back the angler. Running into my uh, teammate behemoth there. Angler already slow, fixing to be slower in the next update. And I start, you know, I was not committed to getting the beacon. I was like, I'll, I'll walk over there. And I don't like being shot with prismas. At least have the decency to shoot me with the new lasers. Prisma's getting one of the ugliest nerfs, 25%. seems cruel almost to nerf the Prisma when you bring back one of the greatest sniper maps ever. Nevertheless, I don't intend to be shot by these things. It looks like it's two regular Prismas and, and two Stellars. Are those Flux? No, I don't think so. Flux is getting a buff next update, but I, I haven't seen a regular Prisma in so long I can't tell. Well, this uh, courageous little... Crimson Hawk made the choice of a wrong place to land. Everybody else decided to back off, and that just means two easy kills as we get close to pushing a five cap, though the odds of, you know, actually accomplishing it with that much fire on me was not very high. But I seem to have gotten their attention anyway with my first drop, and I just cannot resist bringing out the Behemoth now for the second drop because they're all clustered over there to deal with the Angler. So it's sort of like a, you know, little kind of robots in a barrel situation. 
and I don't manage to take out too many. Take out one here. But I do certainly, I think, get their attention now uh, for, for a second time. And I can tell already at this point I am in trouble because we have four members of the team sh chasing what I'm guessing is a Skyros because I hope it's a Skyros if, we, if it takes that long to take it out. And that means that we have a five-on-two situation over here on the left. And I'm so salty right now. When we're playing, I'm so salty. Like, of course, of course, I'm going to get chewed up because the entire team has decided, you know, other than the one guy that they, they, they took out before me, four members of the team have just decided they can't be bothered to actually help me defend home. And there is just no way... Any robot, even a ti even a Titan in most cases, could reject this kind of an onslaught. My clanmate does eventually come to my aid, but having a having someone come to your aid in the Blitz is sort of kind of a good news bad news situation, isn't it? But <laughs> I mean, I'm 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 happy for you, and I I run the Blitz sometimes, but when when someone's coming to to your rescue, you really want it to be, you know, <laughs> you're really looking for like a Fenrir or something, so something, something, right? Rook coming into a situation where we've got a Minos already dancing with the Luchador. And now, there goes the Sirius. Is he serious? In my moment of blindness, I wasn't sure if that was a teammate. And I've had bad luck identifying Luchadors. You know, in the game earlier today, I couldn't tell that the Luchador was alive because the Rook was just tall enough. And the camera was stopping me from seeing that the Rook, that, that the uh, Luchador wasn't on the ground. Didn't love that. But not as much as this Noden is not going to love what happens now. Yeah, they say they buffed the Nodens, but I can't tell. So this is a matchup that's good for absolutely no one. <laughs> there's no question that when unfazed, there's not much a Ravana can do to a Rook. And there's no question that when phased, there's not much a Rook can do to a Ravana. So it ends up just being an annoying slow motion slow motion fight, the end of which is still more or less inevitable. At some point his charges run out. So two rooks now. Almost identical almost identical as the Murkham's got the uh, frost weapon in the alpha slot there. I did get the frost in the alpha, but I haven't gotten the, the betas yet, and I just don't wanna mix my Mix my weapon loadout unless I have a problem with my existing loadout. And especially with something like freeze rockets where there's an effect accumulation. If I'm not accumulating that effect with every rocket, I don't see the point. Walking my way back to their home as time is starting to wind down. I'm taking a lot of damage here on my vehicle, my, uh, my rook, but it does not really matter at this stage in the game. It's going to fly up to be obnoxious. And I think, okay, well, I will just fly over. I don't necessarily need their home. And I realize, you know, they did actually get close to a four cap there for a bit. And I get erased here by the hawk. I was playing sloppy, and I probably deserved that. Only the briefest of appearance for our friend Fenrir, but don't worry, he comes up a lot more in the next game. And that is a win. And the scoreboard, it's okay. 5.7 million, 10 kills, two beacons. Not my best beacon work, not my best anything, but in a game like this, you know, 5 million and 10 kills isn't bad for a, a, a six-minute game. Cool, let's get into the next one. Okay, we are dropping in on Moon. And as you can see, a couple switches in the lineup. One is I brought back this absolute classic the spear redeemer angler since the angler is getting another nerf in 9.2 it's going to make it slower as we talked about uh that <laughs> this is the time it's kind of like like a smoke em if you got them situation if you want to run an angler and you haven't for a while this might be the time to do it because i'm not totally sure it's going to be viable in the future scorpion decided to uh, suicide by taking on the angler early on but now Getting some uh, fire, I <laughs> call it friendly fire because it's from a clanny, clanmate on the red team shooting me. 
And already Angler is half gone. Sneaking in under center, taking some shots here at the Decay Behemoth. And that's our... You see, there's a Scorpion on our team now. I guess the Scorpion's making a comeback. Got a member of the crew here. That's one of those clan tags where if you see it, you know you're probably facing a fight. And the Angler is in some trouble right now. It's kind of a back and forth thing, and there's no, uh, you know, in terms of a matchup, there's no winners at this stage. I'm sure 9.2 will change that, <laughs> although they're both getting nerfed in one way or another. And it looks like the angler manages to edge out the nether. Nether does get a little bit more time on its clock there, dashing behind the geometry of the map. So Angler, more than half dead, uh, but thanks to the durability extender, is at 237. Just peeking here over the hill to see what's going on at this beacon. You know, beacons A and B and C seem good. I have no idea how I got that kill. I was aiming for something else, but I guess something got in front of the Redeemer fire, I guess. And kind of surprising that everyone has decided to fight over the red secondary. But it is what it is, and so I'm going to try to sneak here underneath and do some damage. I think that was a behemoth incinerator that happened to be on the wrong side of the uh, of the spears here. This this angler does have a have the autopilot, so those spears are firing 35% faster than they would normally. And I believe it's a Fafnir? No, it's a Tyr. A Tyr and the Skyros. It's very tough sometimes in the battlefield to distinguish the Tyr and the, uh, and the Fafnir. And the best advice I have is look at the legs. <laughs> at least to me, the legs on the tier and the legs on the factor don't quite look the same. That might just be me. So yes, this is what I was excited to actually get out here. The ultimate cryptic Fenrir. <laughs> ultimate Orkins on a cryptic Fenrir with, that's a hammer on top. And the only skill that I put on this Fenrir that it doesn't normally have is I believe I, I took off the Ardent Defender. Is that the one where if they have like three beacons, you get you get additional defense points? I took that off just so I could put the Explosives Expert skill for the Orkin. And I'm having trouble remembering because I had taken it off before to put Guidance Operator when I was trying to use the Scourge and Calamity. Ooh. Uh, I definitely stole that kill, but it was not super intentional. I just happened to turn around, and <laughs> one orc, and it was all it took. So I apologize to my teammates for uh, popping your pinata there. And we're starting to get a decent beacon advantage here. I mean, certainly we have a beacon advantage. We have a beacon bar advantage as well is what I meant. And I feel like this is, a, this is a obtainable goal. We've got the new frost rockets on the Indra, but the Indra was low enough. And... For whatever reason, this Skyros ha has made the bizarre choice to uh, deploy itself against a Fenrir. I guess he just wanted to be out of his robot, maybe, is the only way that makes sense. And I, I saw some red tags that were going to our secondary here, and I'm trying to think, am I better off holding center, or am I better off going for our secondary or going somewhere else? And I see we're losing our secondary now, and you know... I don't know what to tell you. I can only be on so many beacons at once. Let's try to steal their home to establish equilibrium, but this is not a good matchup. Indra against any normal robot is not a good matchup for the normal robot. <laughs> Doesn't matter how strong it is. Take a minute here, just looking at the map, seeing where I want to drop in, where I could be most useful. I'm trying to drop in at center because I, I can go through center to get to our secondary. One thing to think about on a map like this is not just where the beacons are, but the distance between beacons and... and What's the fastest route to contest a beacon you don't have? Now I saw that there was there was a robot that so there was a uh, a lynx on this beacon. I don't know why he decided to go contest the other. I mean I know why because it's beacon rush and you want to get beacons. But the decision to leave the beacon and go fight with an Indra cost them this beacon. And I try to drop in here, and of course the can't drop in bug gets me. So I try somewhere else, so I try somewhere else, and I eventually drop in. I don't even remember where I was in. I think this is Red Secondary. They 
have to fix that bug. That bug is just... I lose games because of that bug over and over and over again. And I was salty thinking I might lose this one. Although, we do have a healthy player advantage and beacon advantage and beacon bar advantage. So I guess maybe that was not the most uh, founded fear. But after you lose two or three games in a night because you get the can't drop in bug, you know, you start to feel some kind of way about it. And unfortunately, the entire fight seems to be happening on the opposite part of the map where I am. <laughs> so, Rook doesn't have great movement options. And you would think that that dive would be good, but the dive is hard to control. It doesn't, you know, you, you can only go over the things that happen to be the right height. And other than that, you are so slow. I mean, like, Noden slow. So the Indra decided to jump in front, and between that and an orbital strike, it's not looking so good for him. I see now we're going to have some reds try to come over and take back their secondary. It's a 2-2 two two with one contested beacon on beacon B. They're going to come back and try to contest beacon D. And sorry, Clanny, I have to take that Fenrir away from you. We have the melee Lynx getting fired on from, looks like, two people behind him. And he's got a friend here, the, the uh, Feather Destry or the Seraph. If your best option for uh, salvation is a Feather Destry, you're in some, some serious trouble. Second Feather Destry ends up getting flung by my ability. It's probably in orbit right now. Just uh, use it as a satellite. Just start tra doing TV transmissions with it. You're never coming back. There is the five cap, and with the five cap, there is the game. Let's uh, have a look at the scoreboard. Seven million damage, 12 kills, seven beacons. Not bad. Sorry about that, Clanny. That was not... I had a lot of pent-up frustration. That was not about you. That, that's just about me. If you've made it to the end of the video, thank you for making it this far. If you're a dog or cat at home alone, I'm sure you're a good puppy or kitty. And your parents are going to have a treat for you as soon as they come back. And I will talk to you all again real soon. Later.